Hello everyone, recently prison mate Luke has made three videos with accusations against me. One of which was at the trail end of the Toby drama which was responding to the creator Just The Robot and their video. Then more recently he has made two videos solely on me. For better cohesion and personally for everyone's sake, I'll be responding to the two videos separately. Even though the videos are by the same person, they include quite disjointed accusations and I don't want to lump these two creators Luke mentions together. Apologies for how this will be in two parts, however, as stated, with how complex a lot of this is, it is the only way I can fully cover everything without missing anything out. So, the first video is in response to how I reacted to his reaction to Just the Robots video on the Toby drama. Personally, I feel Spock to dealt with that drama pretty swiftly, and Jar himself responded to most of Luke's video, so I won't go into that here. Instead, I will link both Spockta and Jar's videos below if you want more information on all that. At the end of his video, he goes into a tweet I made on Twitter and claims it was suicide baiting. Well, you say are you going to be taking a break from the drama and comments and all that, which is fine. If you need a break, you need one. I'm not saying you don't have mental health problems, but you would constantly come back to post more things than beg for sympathy. And when you were getting genuine criticism for all the garbage you've done, you decided to suicide bait your audience, going off the grid for hours to make your audience worry that you hurt or killed yourself. And guess what? Two days later, you were back to making treats again. And when you don't want to deal with the criticism, you say your mental health is acting up again and how you're going to get away from social media. But when it goes away you come right back to it. Now I feel Luke misspoke here as I highly doubt he took such a vague goodbye tweet as a way of encouraging suicide. What I believe he meant was that I had faked suicidal tendencies and used mental health as an excuse for drama. Not only that, but he has gone on to say I did this to hide from criticism. Firstly, at this point in time it would make very little sense. Thuman's video first mentioned me in the Toby drama on the 6th of October and I agreed with that criticism. My tweet I gave out when I wished to commit suicide was quite a lot later, at the end of October. Despite a few rumours of racism and rumours of harassing Omnia and Kai, which is not true, the initial criticism of getting involved in the drama was perfectly justifiable. I even made an apology post for Omnia, where I stand by all the criticism on commenting on and being tense on drama I really had no reason to stick my nose into. I know Luke later states that by criticising his point on me suicide baiting, I am going against this apology. That is very untrue. Not only are Luke and Omnia two very different people, but both by mental health and my criticism on his mention on my mental health were not related to these actions or the drama as a whole. Secondly, nowhere within this tweet do I specifically mention suicide. Actually, most people would and did see the tweet as me leaving Twitter, which I should have done a while ago. This isn't to turn around and say I never intended suicide, that was true, I did. However, I more mean to bring this up to discredit the faking of suicide or suicide baiting portion of his video. To fake suicide or use it for sympathy, I would have had to tie it closely to the drama, which by the time scale is close but by far no cigar. I would have also had to make it far more blunt that I was intending suicide in the first place. Actually, I can discredit the allegations of faking suicide or at least give a lot more defence than Luke could for his allegations. Two months ago, I made a community post after my argument with Omnia. I realised I was being very irrational, yet at this point in time, I was not in good stead to talk to Omnia yet, which I expressed in my apology post. As, well, considering with how the drama played out in the end, it's pretty apparent I can't manage myself when I get into these depressive episodes. In this community post, I mentioned how I was going to seek professional help, which I did. I rang my doctor and I was prescribed an antidepressant cetralin. I was also offered a number of counsellors for transferal, which sadly, due to the pandemic, has been slower than anticipated. Since my depression started from childhood depression, it is quite severe and according to studies, doesn't react to medication as well as if it was a newer condition. Your childhood experiences may have an impact on why you may be suffering from depression now. People who become depressed at a young age tend to experience more severe symptoms and are less receptive to treatment because of how long they've gone without help. One of the many side effects of this drug was suicidal tendencies. As mentioned in my apology post where my suicide attempt was only even mentioned due to Luke's video already being published, my attempt or my still lingering feelings of self-destructive behaviour is not due to Omnia, Luke, the comments I got from Thuman's video, which I've since spoken to Thuman and realised that was never her intent, so don't blame her for that. Not even my groomer has the power over me to make me feel that way. 
I apologize for my tweet. I know it would have worried a few people, and I do deeply apologize for worrying you. However, to be truthful, I can't bring myself to regret it. That tweet did save my life. I was able to actually get help. And now in future, which I pray it doesn't even need to happen again, I know who I can talk to privately, who I can trust, and how to manage those feelings in the future. Anyway, after his video, I was quite upset. At first, I fully believed him, and it fucked with me a lot. I started to believe that I had only done it as a cry for help, as though a plea for help is manipulative all in itself. I believed I was a disgusting person as I already had a lot of regrets for even talking about the Toby drama the way I did. And now this was said. The fact that I was talking about the Toby drama also neglected to even tell me of Luke's accusations, and I only found out on my own when my subs started to drop and I received comments due to it, I also felt very isolated, as though it was believed by everyone. Luke made the point in a follow-up video that I didn't receive any sub loss due to his video, nor changed anyone's perception of me. I don't care about subscribers, and honestly, growth is very stressful to me. But yes, to clarify, people did leave. It was after my apology post and my statement against Luke's allegations where people who left due to the drama came back. My last two videos made around this time also just did well and brought newer people in. My point is, my channel did not suffer in the end. It would be an obvious lie to dispute. It was the fact that I myself felt hurt and upset by the allegations and it started to pain me a lot. So I messaged Luke. I came to Luke after my apology post and before my statement defending myself against his claims. I will admit I came to Luke when I was still shaken up, so I will admit fault where with my wording does not betray how I wanted to come across. I felt upset and that I won't deny, I still am. I wanted to share how I felt to Luke, with how his betrayal and dragging me into his jar video did upset me. It made me uncomfortable that although my last tweet on the matter was on the 18th of October, where I tried to, again, defend myself against racism allegations that in hindsight I could have just left alone, where I even made an attempt to not even name the people involved so new people were not brought into the drama. Luke using my goodbye tweet, dragging it into a drama that I will never stop expressing does not have the power to cause suicidal tendencies that I experienced due to my mental health, felt like it was clasping at straws. I say within these DMs to Luke that I do not believe he did it out of malice, and I still say that despite me fluctuating on my mood, which can make me more upset about this than my good days. Luke claims I said he had faked mental illness entirely. However, what I meant to say was that it was that I was being accused of this based on his betrayal. I apologise for that confusion. I won't lie, the mass sub, sub part of my DM was a spur of the moment point brought on by anxiety. I had not dealt with this kind of downward trend before and I believed at the time it would be a larger trend than it ended up being. I spoke out of anxiety, which I should have instead stepped back, collected myself and DM'd you when I was in a more stable state. I even put at the end of my admittedly poor poorly worded DMs that I apologise for being badly worded. I both felt shaken up, which was true, and I didn't want to come off as too strong. I apologise if I did come off as too strong when I DM'd you, Luke, but I assure you my intent was to talk to you and have a discussion about your video, and maybe we could both come to a mutual understanding of each other. Due to not getting a response, and the fact that I felt it was in my right to stand up, my, stand up to myself due to these allegations of suicide baiting, I made a community post. I chose not to name Luke in this post, as although he was tagged in my apology post, as I agreed with parts of his criticism of me, such as not coming back online when I should be on hiatus, and be more responsible m with my emotional bursts. I hope that the post being very separate, it would not stir a drama. Only those who had already seen Luke's video would have understood who I was responding to. That's all this post was for, responding to some of the types of allegations and comments I was receiving. After this post, nearly two days after I had DM Luke privately, he finally responded to me. Already, it was a lot more hostile than I anticipated. He latched onto my mention of him following what I was doing on Twitter to try and link to the Toby drama, where he had already used some tweets already in his first video and my suicide attempt as a way of furthering a narrative about me within the drama. As previously mentioned, and already mentioned to Luke himself, I did misword myself. However, that was just in my DMs with him, made in a heated state. He was fully within his right to do research. 
it's just I personally felt weirded out. My recent comments on the drama was not to insert myself into it, as the most recent comments on the drama was to either dispel allegations already blown out of proportion or simply expressing sympathy. It felt with him following my socials so closely, it felt unjust for him to interpret them in the per worst possible way. My public statement did not address this at all, as it was just emotional paranoia when I initially DM'd him, and it did not matter whether it was true or false anyway. I also made sure to say both to Luke and DMs, and in my community post, that he did not do this out of malice, and he himself is not responsible for what his fans did. I wanted to only try and talk to him about the effects his wording and portrayal had on both me and other people who I saw in his comment section. So the fact he begins by accusing me of dragging out drama, purely due to my community statement, did already feel unjustly accusatory considering his claims. His first points were the ones that, if he read my apology post, he would know I agreed with him on my issues, with returning to social media when I shouldn't. So for his first part, although worded quite rudely, is a moot point, so I will ignore that. His point on me posting goodbye and then acting like I never did that was, un was untrue, as proven by his own video. I made a tweet specifically saying sorry, and again, at this time, my apology post does address this tweet and what I did wrong here. His point of not only being able to come to this conclusion is also only half of the issue that I had with him. Not only did he come to this conclusion, he did so in a public video, with him spreading the narrative that I am a suicide beta instead of simply saying the rightful criticism that I should keep the word to myself to stay offline. His other issue in his video was connecting my attempt directly with the drama, or more specifically, saying it was to hide from criticism. Bearing in mind, the timeline here would make little sense for me to do all that, then, of all times, content creators are people, and they are allowed to have mental health issues outside of internet drama, as it sadly just happens. He, as he expressed within these DMs to me, does not know me, nor came to ask questions. Therefore, I feel it is inappropriate to comment so boldly on people who have things going on in their personal lives. The way he states I portrayed him, I would assume publicly, is being very shitty was both hypocritical and confusing, considering the only thing I posted at this point was my apology post and my statement against his video. He states he did not deserve that just because I don't wish to deal with criticism. Okay, so again, my apology post shares that I did agree with portions of his video on me. I still do, and as stated, I am learning where to properly talk about my issues. However, yes, I also had criticism of how Luke handled the situation, and ironically, despite his main issue with Toby and myself being we can't take criticism, he completely shut down a more civil discussion on my own criticisms with his video. He then comes to say more things that I have already both addressed and agreed with that I have publicly stated. What I have gathered from this brief interaction with Luke and his second video I will go on to address is he seems to be under the impression that my one criticism with Luke's portrayal of me somehow nullifies my apology. That isn't how that works. Luke then proceeds to both prove he has read my apology post, which would indicate he knows exactly what I agreed with, both with what he said and what others had said, which would make his continuous mentioning of this to hide from his own criticism more apparent, but that he also seemingly, from my perspective, purposely mixes the two community posts. The one where I apologised and agreed with him, and the one where I defended myself. The one I tagged him in, and the one I didn't. Whether this was to try and shut me down as a liar, or because he disliked being tagged in the apology post, or simply because he got himself confused with which one he was fighting, I don't know. He then proceeds to say I have god-awful behaviour and how it isn't his fault people are upset with it. Again, I came to criticise his unwarranted allegations against me, not to fight every criticism ever sent my way. He then also states it is hilarious that I am bitter for having to apologise and it shows how awful I am. Firstly, as mentioned, again, as said in my community post that he admitted to reading within this DM thread, I agreed with a lot of the criticism and apologised for it. Even within my post defending myself, I apologised for worrying people. 
apologising and taking on this criticism is not mutually exclusive with wishing to discuss the criticism I have with his own video. Secondly, Luke again, both here and in his second video on me, seems to use my apology to Omnia as a shield for himself, with claiming that just because I came to him on criticism with his video, that it nullifies my apology to Omnia as though they are the same person. Luke, no, my apology to my audience and Omnia is not your apology to then say is null and void because I came to you with separate criticism that you don't wish to take. Lastly, Luke mentions I have a habit of twisting DMs against people, and how I shouldn't. I feel this was more of a way to try and shield himself if I ever release these DMs in their entirety, as it came across to both me and my boyfriend who was with me when Luke was responding to me initially, like a preemptive measure against further criticism with how hostile he was towards me. Considering in his own video he later tried to twist these DMs as a way of vilifying me, I think that seems to have been less genuine concern and more just projection. But well, that is how I perceive this, and I do believe that this drama has made everyone on edge, and I want to assure you, Luke, that although you did really hurt me, both with your video and in this conversation, even if I were to make a video which you shared as a reason you made more videos on me, I wasn't going to share these DMs. What I wanted to do was properly address both the rightful criticism and the accusations. Anyway, now that covers the first video and the points Luke made in the start of his second video. So he begins to start sharing screenshots of things I've said online, the first being a reply to a comment that I can't see, nor know the real time frame of, as it seems to have been screenshotted soon after it was made. I can assure you this was not made 20 hours before he made his video. As from even reading this, I can see that it was in a distressed state, so I would bet this was during the initial wave from Luke, so nearly a month ago. In it, he underlines because I didn't die. He later claims in his video that I told my audience he wanted me to commit suicide, that he told me to commit suicide, or that I stated he attacked me because I didn't die. And the fact that she would go around YouTube and tell people that I wish she committed suicide is so disgusting. It's one thing to say that me accusing you of manipulating your fans for sympathy is too much. That's its own discussion. But saying that I wanted you dead is another. And the fact that you're so willing to put that out there to defame me, all because I called you out, shows a lot about you. No. This is in reference to the only proof of faking suicidal tendencies was that I didn't die. The fact that I actually did have these thoughts and tendencies, and I had several and I had several people coming to my videos telling me that because I didn't actually kill myself, I was a liar and a manipulator, it made me feel like I was in a lose-lose situation. Either I had hurt myself, or I was a liar and a manipulator for not going through with it. That's what I was trying to tell Luke. By that what saying what he did, he perpetuates the idea that people who are suicidal or who have those thoughts but don't go through with it are liars. And again, as I said, I don't think that was his intent or that he did it in malice, but that's what I was trying to criticise. He then shows this tweet. Was it petty? Yes. Was it a purely emotional response? Yes. Was it a lie? Well, considering in his own video, he called me a suicide beta and confirmed that he believed that in DMs I shared, that is not a lie. The fact he refuses to apologise or even admit slight fault is also not a lie, as proven by the DMs and the fact that he's even made two videos on me thus far. Swearing when I try to talk is also accurate. Maybe it could be argued no, and I can understand that wholeheartedly as he didn't throw curse words like you fucking bitch or anything like that, but his messages to me did include quite a bit more swearing than a calm discussion would call for. That is, again, proven in the DMs I've shared. He then expresses how in his last video he only criticised me for two things. The first one was commenting on the drama still and shows a reply of mine to Norni. And in my last Toby video I criticised her for a couple things. The main points being if you don't want to involve yourself in drama, stop commenting on every piece of it that doesn't involve you. Where she expressed that she was sent racism allegations, what I said that it also happened to me, and I hope she feels better. This isn't me commenting on the drama for the sake of drama or to spark anything. This was simply me wishing somebody else well. 
He also claims his only other criticism was that I was sympathy baiting. And I said she was sympathy baiting to her audience by not only constantly saying how she's going to be taking a break for her mental health and never doing it, instead just ignoring what she said and acting like she never posted it. She would also make really serious posts on Twitter saying how she's done goodbye, went offline for half a day, and then acted like it was nothing afterward. And I felt like that wasn't fair to her fans and I called her out for it. Okay, so yeah, if you're only half listening, he sounds like he's telling the truth here. However, if you pay attention, you can tell he's changed his allegations from suicide baiting to sympathy baiting. And when you were getting genuine criticism for all the garbage you've done, he decided to suicide bait your audience, going off the grid for hours to make your audience worry that you hurt or killed yourself. And guess what, two days later you were back to making tweets again. And when you don't want to deal with the criticism, you say your mental health is acting up again, and how you're going to get away from social media. But when it goes away, you come right back to it. The points I agreed with, he kept in his video, but the very serious allegation, the only one I had an issue with, he seemingly sweeps under the rug here to make it sound like he did nothing wrong in this situation. This is very manipulative to do this, as it comes across that you both know you made an error in your previous video, but choose to change the narrative within this video and neglect to accept that. He then claims that I apologised, which is true, albeit show showing only a section of that apology. Honestly, if people want to read it, it's still on my community post, so I have not too much issue with that, I guess. He, however, then spins my criticism of his suicide baiting point, the same point that he even hides from this video, is somehow me being bitter about having to apologise. But that's not where it ended. She kept going on about it. And not only that, instead of being sorry for what she did, she turned really bitter about having to apologize and started lying about me. Or just a few days later, it turned from an issue she had to work on and improve. It turned into me being this awful person who was throwing around accusations that were ruining her career. I would not mind, however, even in my DMs to Luke, I clearly express that I stand by my apology and still do. Just as I stated previously, Luke's main narrative within this video is that because I had a problem with one aspect of his video, that means the whole apology was null. He mentions that I went from saying I have issues I need to work on to saying he is an awful person who was ruining my career. All while sharing another cropped part of my community post, conveniently leaving out the part where I take responsibility I need to take, and also sharing that I don't believe he was being malicious. Also, I cannot stress this enough that YouTube is not my career. And at this point in time, where I am right now, I don't want it to be my career. So the fact that he is saying that I am saying that he ruined my career or that I'm even referring to it as a career in the first place makes no sense. I'm a university student for maths. I feel moving forward as I have already proven that I have lost subs during his initial video and I made this post while I was still losing those subs, this was not a lie. However, this was more of a point to bring across that I was upset with why people were leaving. The amount of subs a person has does not directly mean a career. For me, this is not my career, it's a hobby and it is not the thing I care about. I cared people left feeling I was a suicide beta. Another point to note is that he brings up that I was gaining subs during this time period while sharing posts from five days ago from the time of his video. I understand your point here, Luke, but it would be disingenuous to both ignore both the loss and the time span your narrative is trying to create here. The fact you just blatantly call me a liar due to your own manipulative editing comes across to me as if this was done intentionally to make a point. He mentions in his video that I said on Twitter that he wished I committed suicide, yet he neither proves I ever said this at all, as well as completely, again, ignores in my community post what I said he did not do this out of malice. I find it absolutely disgusting that you would throw this accusation in here, as what you are saying is incredibly hurtful as in, and is not a laughing matter at all. In no way have you wished I committed suicide, nor have I stated as such. This feels like both of twisting words and just baseless accusations to further the narrative within this video. You took a comment where I was somewhat vague, where I said people were telling me that I was a liar for not killing myself, 
And it seemingly seems that you took it to mean that I said it, despite the contradictions that I've already presented to you. Later after this, he goes into our DMs. Not only did he say that I was grossly misrepresenting him, as well as stating he never misrepresented me, but then he chalks what he was doing as research. Throwing a baseless accusation about suicide baiting is not research, and according to even this video, you lack in the research department. He states I would leave him alone, but then continued to tweet about him. Continued? But the tweet you showed as proof I continued was my first thread to defend myself against your criticism. He cuts the rest of this thread, but even just by lining up with my mirror community post and the very blatant fact that it says thank you to reading at the start, it is the very same statement that I gave out. For clarification, my Twitter thread was posted before my community post and both were posted within minutes of each other. My community post was more of a cleaner version of my Twitter post due to Twitter's restraints. To say this is quote unquote still tweeting about you Luke either means you did not do research onto this at all or you are again using manipulative editing to twist the narrative. He goes over again both the DMs and tweets they've already gone over. He then shares when I DM'd him again, so I will go into that, and these DMs seem to be what sparked him to make this video in the first place. I DM'd Luke a bit, a bit after the Spockta video, as although my channel had stabilised and things seemed okay, I still had some people spreading the misinformation that Luke gave in his initial video. I was still also very hurt, and honestly, if I lost every subscriber, but the pain was a fraction of what I felt after Luke's video, I would have been much happier. I reached out after the Toby situation ended, as as I approvingly stated in my community post and in this video, <laughs> I felt Luke acted on adrenaline and didn't mean what he said. I wished to talk to him and to let us understand each other. I'd hope that since it was over, he would be a lot more willing to talk than the first time. I had been shown that he has done things like this as well in other situations where he makes videos in the spur of the moment while showing misinformation. And I personally don't want to ever believe that people ever purposely do this, so to see that he has a track record of this, I decided to try and not see it as too personal and just try and see if we can talk now that the drama was over. I was mulling over making a video on the situation myself with an apology for my tweet and to defend myself against the claims Luke made, after feeling dismissed and isolated after those claims, but I wished to see if I could talk to Luke to sort things out privately, as I didn't want to make a video on all this. I apologise if what I said came across like a threat. But you need to bear in mind that if you see everything that I say to you as the worst possible interpretation, you need to also start making sure that what you say and do doesn't have such a bad interpretation also, and be willing to understand when people do come to that conclusion. Namely, with how hostile you were in our DMs, and with the suicide baiting comments you made about me. As I said, I don't believe he did this all out of malice, but the amount of twisting of the truth within this video makes it harder for me to see it as anything but. I am hoping that this is all down to you just misinterpreting this as a threat, and if you did, I apologise. Anyway, let's get on to the meat of the video. What time are we at? Yeah, there's, there's a lot, this is why there's in two sections. Anyway, the claims by Creepshow Art. Now, I used to be friends with Shannon, but after one too many times of her doing things on her social media that seemed vindictive, and after I came to her a couple times for it, after the last time when my criticism was ignored, later for her to then make a tweet saying how she will listen to her true friends while naming somebody who was backing up this vindictive behaviour. It felt like too much. It felt like a slight to me that I came to her trying to be honest with her, and it felt too much. So, whether it was right or not, I soft-blocked her. After that, I did get worked up and came to my boyfriend about it, as I looked up to Shannon, and she inspired my channel with how it is today. Something that I still say, 
even after all the drama between us, even after she had publicly stated things about me that weren't true. But quite a lot later, um, at the end of 2018, I finally started actually making proper videos. Slightly before then, I would do little speed paints here and there just to prove art was mine when I was posted it on Amino and etc, etc. Very, very lazily slapped together, really, just to go, hey, this is my art, blah, 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 blah. But um, near the end of that, um, I met a another YouTuber called Creepshow Art, and she made a lot of discussion topics on her channel. And it kind of inspired me to do my own thing because before then I would see like Storytime animators and other uh, Storytime speed paints where, not not to bash on anyone because obviously this is a nice personality to have, but when they're like very nice and well-spoken and very soft and nice mm -hmm. and I'm like, huh, that's so cute. But but I'm not like that. I'm quite <laughs> I'm quite sarcastic. I'm a bit rough around the edges, so I don't know if I should do that. And then I see Shannon, uh, creep show art, doing her thing, and she was a bit like me. She was sarcastic. She was a bit rough around the edges. She had a bit of like sass to her. Mm -hmm. And even though we're not the same person, we're like <laughs> quite different uh, personalities. But the fact that it kind of spoke to me in the way like. Oh, I I don't have to fit this particular mold that I've seen all the time to mm. make story time speed paints or art commentary stuff. Should I have spoken to Shannon properly on this? Most definitely. Was my subtweet on her justified? Fuck no. Was it right for me to leave? After this controversy, I don't know. Shannon made a Twitter thread on a creator that was friends with her before she hit 100k and then this friend later ran around telling people she was psychotic and that she had screamed at them. I later found out she was talking about me. She came to Luke to support him on this video and give permission to use this story against me. So first of all, I want to dispel the rumours that many people got from Shannon's poor wording and what Luke said in his video. Many people took this as me hurting Shannon when she was a small creator and tried to ruin her career before it even started. This can be blatantly proven false with the fact this all happened this year, where she is much bigger than what people believe she was when this all started. Peaches and Creepshow used to be good friends. Creepshow even shouted Peaches out early on in her YouTube career when Peaches made a video about drawing like Creepshow art, and they started talking and became friends. Well, later down the track, they did a video together that didn't do as well as they expected, and Peaches, instead of being grateful to do a collab with Creepshow, got upset with her for something that she couldn't control. Peaches made up this lie that Creepshow had gotten angry at her because of the video not doing well, and when Peaches got mad at Creepshow for her Jacqueline Hill video, instead of being a friend, and not letting it ruin her friendship with her, she soft blocked Creepshow and started vaguely tweeting about her out of spite. And not only that, Peaches decided to ruin Creepshow's reputation in the art community, telling people that Creepshow had yelled at her and was just losing it at her. Poisoning Creepshow's reputation while she was still just a small channel, she was below 100,000 subscribers when this happened. She was below 100,000 subscribers when this happened. The story Luke makes out in his video with the messages by Shannon giving her recounting of events, is that while Shannon was still under 100k subscribers, me and her did a collaboration. Then, after the video did not do very well, I got mad at Shannon for it, tried to gaslight her into saying that she was the one mad with me, and then later down the line, as the story goes, I got mad at her for the Jacqueline Hill video, and then blocked her and kept tweeting a lot of shit about her and then told Toby that Shannon full and screamed at me, which was then made inspiration for the Faults of Creepshow art video. I honestly do not recall if she was under or over 100,000 subscribers when we did our collaboration, but from my recollection, she was over 100,000. The collaboration for one, which many suggest, was not my idea. The notion I did this for views is very upsetting. We did a collaboration when she tweeted out that she needed content while she couldn't make videos, and she even came to ask me directly if I wanted to do something for her. 
since her Twitter has been deleted, I can't very well go and get that tweet. Instead, I'm just showing two DMs between me and my friend who also remember this actually happening. And yes, I am cropping out my own name on Discord because it is my personal account as I've been away from my more public one. Considering the ONIP situation at the time was something I wanted to talk about, but also had no room for it on my own channel at the time, I made the video at her request to help a friend out. The video did less well for her channel, but honestly, I didn't even notice at the time. I was too busy being starstruck that ONIPs even saw the video in the first place. And I say that not to make it sound like, oh, I care about the fact that all oh, people are seeing my video. I more say it because it's very contradicting evidence. If I was in it for the views or fame or something, why would I be mad about a video that had somebody who I liked see me? I never mentioned the views or even cared about the views of the video. This is the first of many times I'm accused of something with no evidence. I don't think Shannon was ever mad at me for the views either, which, if this was her channel, and someone was to ma get mad at somebody else for the views, wouldn't it not make more sense in this narrative for Shannon to be the one to be mad at me? But no, she never was. It was simply a video to help Shannon out when she asked. And both of us were okay with it. At most, I chose myself personally, to not do that kind of collaboration again. And the only reason being is due to criticism I got from another creator about it, where they mentioned that my video did affect her channel. Namely, because it was my video on her channel, which people don't subscribe to. That's all I learned from it. The narrative that Luke and seemingly Shannon paints that I used her for views was false. During this year, so already a huge issue on the lie Shannon was under 100,000k as Luke says in his video, like a few months ago, Shannon made a questionable video on Jacqueline Hill. There is no point discussing it, as she has, from my understanding, since changed her behaviour regarding that stuff, and it would be very unfair to bring that up. It was the criticism I have of her, and if she changed, awesome. Why would I bring that up? But at the time I came to her, as I did with a few other controversies she was in, to give my opinion and say how she was coming across. Again, it was my personal criticism that I came to her on, on a situation she seems to have overcome at this point in time. But back then, however, it came across as though although she was being polite, she was being a bit dismissive. Then after we spoke, she made a tweet saying how she will listen to her true friends about criticism of her and then named a creator who was actively defending her more questionable actions. This is the point where I started to feel like I was being fully dismissed despite coming to her as a friend. And it felt like a slap in the face. So yeah, even though it was very reactionary, I soft blocked Shannon. And I was just upset. I was upset that somebody who I looked up to, a friend of mine who I looked up to, was making content that seemed to have been hurting people. I spoke to my friend about it, and I did stupidly subtweet her. I do apologise for that, as it was uncalled for, definitely uncalled for. I accept that. I knew that from the start. A kind friend of mine was also nice enough to give permission to use our DMs as proof that even months ago, I have expressed the wrongdoing here. It isn't something that I'm just apologising for now because I got caught. After that, I didn't even really have a, any reason to bring up Shannon again. I had already wa mentioned wanting to change my channel away from being 4Kids creep show even when I was her friend. So that was not a slight on her, even though I know that at the time, it was also me just being petty that day due to it. I accept that. Those two tweets were the only ones ever about Shannon. And only one of them even mentioned Creepshow Art by name. And if I recall, 
They were made at the same time. Toby became friends with me a good while later, and she came to ask me if I could help her with the video on Shannon. Toby had already made tweets towards Shannon before even starting her video, and came to me on the tail end of making it. I refused to join, as I told her I had already expressed my criticisms with Shannon, and to hope that Toby was nice in her video, as I believe Shannon is nice herself. I have been told that one allegation that has been created was that I was a catalyst for the faults of Creepshow Art video. I really mean to stress here that no, Toby was already very well into creating her video, criticising Shannon, even tweeting about people being scared of her before coming to me. Even though I was fair with Shannon as I was her friend for a time, even if I did criticise her to Toby, just as I am being criticised for my faults, I was also fully within my right to criticise a creator. I wasn't hating on you, Shannon. In Toby's video, she mentions creators criticising Shannon, but due to her tweets made before we even spoke of creators being scared of her, as well as Toby stating she referred to other creators in her video too, I didn't say anything about it initially. I should have, as it did later seem like I was the only one mentioned, and the one Toby was referring to. I apologise if that's how it came across, but I do want to stress here that I am not the only creator that Toby spoke to. I asked Toby for permission for these DMs, but she does not wish to be involved, so I'll respect her wishes for not wanting to be involved in this. The claims that I tried to defame Shannon and ruin her career is very strange to me. Shannon and I have never been on call together, so the mentioning of her screaming at me was very strange. She never has. Even if what she meant to say was that it was through the tone via text, this still did not happen. The most I have confronted her on issues she has had with me was after her response to Toby's video, where she spoke of me. I do wish to stress here that also... Despite the allegations of me being an inspiration for the Toby video, which again, as mentioned, I was one of the last people spoken to, I also find it odd that now Shannon is claiming that I flooded the video with false accusations when she initially said that she liked the video and thought that most of the criticisms in it were fair. It feels like backpedaling, in my opinion. Anyway, after the response to Toby's video, I DM Shannon to try and correct some misinformation and miscommunication, despite both Shannon and Luke sharing these DMs. Neither have shown the full DMs, so here they are. But it genuinely sucks when someone you cared for decides they want nothing to do with you and tells people about the things you've said to them privately that you trusted them with. Hi, I have a new account due to all our shiz, but it's still me. I was just gonna say I saw your latest video, I saw what you said, and I can understand you're upset with us not talking anymore, but you also kind of painted me as a kind of a huge bitch, saying I was ranting and raving about you, and how I was spreading private information about you to multiple content creators. I want to try and clear some things up, as I have quite a few people who kind of hate me right now, and I feel like it was either a misunderstanding or miswording. Firstly, I soft blocked you to be temporary. I was going through a lot of stress and seeing you going down a road that was going so bitter upset me and I needed distance. I told you to your face how it made me feel and how to change for the better. I just personally couldn't watch that go on any longer. I had already said briefly about this in our last DMs before you made that video. And they also went so far as to remove the video they had previously made about me from their channel. Second, my Draw Like Creep Show art video wasn't taken down because of you. I have always been open about your strengths and how you made me want to do YouTube before and after this. The Draw Like a YouTuber series as a whole got unlisted and kept in a playlist. Third, I had mentioned how people kept calling me a clone of you and how I want to move on from those roots. That wasn't a fuck you to you. I was more frustrated with being called a clone, and in reality, many people worried I would come to make content like you. However, I have still had hope that you would and can still turn that around. Fourth, no, I have not been spreading private information about you, nor have I been badmouthing you to other creators. Toby became a close friend, 
and she had her own grievances. I rejected going in a video against you and I rejected giving any DMs for her to go and use. I also kept asking her if she wants to do it to be nice because as I said, I sing your praises too. The fact that a good chunk of your video was very one-sided and kind of weird retelling of events and saying I had just been shitting on your name to everyone I see is kind of upsetting. I had subbed to you again seeing you had come to change and wanted to talk to you again to say sorry until I sat through all that and I don't know. I had sent you a civil and hopeful message just before all of this too. Sending you your criticism instead of covering it myself, because I have hope for you. Sorry I left and I'm sorry that I hurt you, but sadly I feel it's probably for the best. I see where this could be misconstrued as worse than intended. I have been told by my friend I can sometimes not articulate myself well, but all in all, my point was, I wanted to correct the misunderstandings privately with Shannon that she expressed in her response to Toby. I felt slightly hurt that Shannon said a lot of this with very little reasoning, or even ignoring my DM to her apologising for leaving before even her video went up. I have apologised for leaving, and I do understand that is upsetting. I also fully understand, initially, when you believed that I was the sole person Toby was talking about, or that I had bad-mouthed you to Toby. However, now your claims have changed to me, take, to me being angry at, at collaboration views, that I try to ruin your reputation with even you or Luke painting me as the larger creator for a portion of it, and stating I had claimed you screamed at me and attacked me, with no proof of any of this. Now, before Peaches or anyone else says that I'm faking these or something else stupid, I got these from the lady herself, Creepshow. So don't try and say these are fake. Despite Luke stressing, this must be true, as it is testimony straight from Creepshow art, that's all it is. Testimony. I know what it sounds like is bad, I get that, but I would like everyone to notice that it is only her testimony. There has been no proof of our screenshots to back up many things she's been saying. The mere fact your claims have done so much damage to me, with no evidence of me doing such things to you, Shannon, is very contradictory to the narrative that I have ruined your reputation. I asked on Twitter who the people you had claimed I had lied to were, but very shortly after, the account was deleted. So... As this video is long enough, and I don't wish to lump two separate allegations together, I will close this video here and address the other video in due time. To Luke, I apologise if how I worded things was antagonistic, and I especially did not mean to come off as though I was threatening you, as I personally did not wish to have more public drama. I do, however, want to stress that just because I can admit fault in some of my actions, it does not mean I cannot also come to you about yours. Both sides can be at fault. To Shannon, I am sorry I left when I did, and I'm sorry it hurt. I am sure it probably did, and I don't want to say it didn't. You're a good friend to me, and I will admit it was wrong of me to leave when I did, especially with not coming to you first to make sure that the tweet that you made about true friends was about me or not. It was reactionary. It just hurt to see you go down that path, and I'm glad that it seems that you came out of that. However, I also came to you to discuss things, as I never saw it as you intentionally lying, but just miscommunication. The fact that I was ignored and had one of your friends even come to me to tell me how I was rude to you in DMs was upsetting. But I never chose to make that drama because it was just hearsay. Even your friend coming to me saying that you said that I was rude to you in DMs could be complete bullshit for all I know. You know what I mean? It's just hearsay. The fact that your allegations are so damning with no evidence other than one screenshot of two unnamed people saying they heard from somebody else that I said something, even admitting that they can't fully remember what was said, 
is upsetting. I hope at some point that we can discuss in DMs at some point where things went wrong here. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back for a part two. I'm sorry for people who wanted me to do this all in one fell swoop, but considering how much detail and how complex all this is, I just have to make it in two parts. I'm just hoping that things get better at some point soon.